Watching Zane Gallo sing. Listen to this album, but it still sounds the same. What the fuck's going on? Oh, hey everyone, Richard Metal Fan here, and today we talk Reload, or Load Part 2. <laughs> Now, as I mentioned in my load review, Metallica had written like 27 songs that could be honestly considered like a double album. But instead of releasing like two in one, Metallica decided to like split it up in a half. They released the first half on load and a year later they released the second half on their reload. And what well, basically it's pretty much the exact same thing album almost like this basically stylistically it's a bluesy acoustic hard rock album I'm saving the float and this is also the last album to feature longtime bassist Jason Newstead they had the last actually original album like album that he actually played on with Metallica uh, um although he did play on a couple other albums like Garage Inc s and but anyway that's besides the point and the album artwork what can I say hey it's it actually is mixed up with blood and piss I'm like ugh, like that's just gross. I mean, I don't even know it. it you can even see the piss in the blood. It's just uh, grody. Um, and uh, what can I what can I say? I mean, a lot of people will consider this a, one of their weaker albums. I'm gonna have to sadly agree with that. Although there are like most of the songs are strong, but the others kind of drag out for too long, and it's just kind of. Eh, and honestly, I would prefer Load over Reload. That's just my honest opinion. But without further ado, let's dive into this track by track. Now the album opens up with Fuel, which is the most well-known song on here. It just has a very simple riff and a good guitar solo, and it's known infinitely for James starting off saying, Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. You're, and this song has basically been played like on every sports event, and even played in fucking NASCAR. Hence the name of the song, Fuel. Um, but I think it's a over all right song. Um, the memory remains. I mean, James's vocals sound a bit different on here. It sounds a little bit more grungy, a little bit. It just has a really good rock tone to it, and it has a special guest appearance from Marianne Faithful, who in the background is singing na 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 na, which which I know a lot of people would say it kind of sounds a bit annoying. But honestly, I don't really mind it too much. It's a that's a good song. I like it. Um, Devil's Dance, which is kind of a bluesy-ish number, where it has like a mean beat to it, and it's kind of catchy, but I feel like kind of near the end of the song it drags a little bit. I mean, most of the, most of the song is good, but near the end it's kind of, eh, I don't know. And then we get to The Unforgiven 2, which is the sequel to the first Unforgiven off the Black album, and the riffs are pretty much the same on this on the first time we're given, but with a distortion to it. And it starts off this exactly the same with the backwards horn. And I think it's a good song lyrically. I think it's one of the best songs on this album. And I like it. And th after the four strong songs, I feel like this kind of the where it drags a little bit. And it kind of that goes, uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, just better than you, which honestly, this song is completely unforgettable. I just, I don't really care for that song a lot. There's nothing... Thing else to say uh slither is just garbage it's too long and it just feels very rep repetitive uh carpe diem baby and this is where it actually the album picks up again it has a really good build up at the beginning and a very good catchy chorus and it also has a little bit of a darker tone to it but the verses are a little bit bland but the, it has a good guitar solo it's that's very strong um Bad Seed, which is a short and average rock song, and it has a good chorus to it. And um, Where the Wild Things Are, which is actually the last song that Jason Newsted actually wrote with Metallica, his last songwriting credit. And this song is very brilliant, and it has some really good drumming from Lars. I think this is the best song on here. I actually enjoy it a lot more than, well, most of the album. <laughs> I think it's a really great song. I enjoy it. Uh, Prince Charming, which is a decent song. It's kind of cheeky a little bit, and it's a little bit too long for me. Um, Low Man's Lyric, which honestly has some good lyrics in there, but it's too long. And, and it's, the end is kind of meh, boring. Um, attitude, it's just, it gets right into it, and the the lyrics aren't that special, but and I feel like the solo kind of drags out way too long. And um, Fixer, kind of like... Um, 
uh, better than you, Slither, and uh, uh, Lo Low Man's Lyric. I feel like it's kind of unmemorable. Yeah. Now, overall, Reload is a weak, weak album in Metallica's career. I mean, I mean, there are some good gems in there. I actually like most, I like the first half of the album is good, but I feel like near the other half is just kind of meh. If I were to give this album a score, I'd probably give this like a 6 out of 10. Now, I know a lot of people are wondering why I have a copy. It's just like for collection purposes and, you know, and I, I actually got this handed down from my dad years ago, who was part of his C collection, and I somehow got it, so it stuck with me. But, yeah, if I were to give this a score, I'd give this like a 6 out of 10. Um, but it's doesn't gonna, but it's not as bad as that the atrocity that we're going to talk about in the next review, but you know what we're all going to talk about. And that's for the next review of the Metallica discography. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all in the next review. And keep it metal.